It seems improbable at first glance. A Tesla electric car for just $13,579. But Elon Musk isn't just trying to launch a new, inexpensive model. What he's doing is redesigning the entire economic landscape of the automotive industry. To achieve this price and still maintain profit margins of 15% to 18%, something that even Chinese automakers can't achieve with vehicles under $20,000, Tesla is betting everything on a bold strategy. And the secret isn't in the metal, nor the battery. It's in the software. Full self-driving, in its 14th version, is no longer an extra, but has become the backbone of the business. The change seems technical, almost invisible. The removal of the confirmation brake before FSD takes control. But that's just the surface. What Tesla is doing, in practice, is transforming an economical car into a scalable autonomous platform. It's not just about driving without pedals or hands on the steering wheel. It's about turning the car into a mobile subscription. If only 25% of owners subscribe to FSD for $99 a month, Tesla already profits between $300 and $500 per year per unit, practically net with no recurring production costs. Now multiply that by 2 million units sold annually. The math starts to get interesting. The traditional logic of the automotive industry is based on selling the car and hoping to make a little profit from maintenance or parts. Elon Musk wants to reverse that. The car is sold at an ultra-competitive price, and the real gold mine is continuous use. More specifically, the use of the software that powers autonomous driving. This completely changes the game. It's as if the business model of Netflix or Spotify were being fitted into a car. Only instead of movies or music, it's the steering wheel that's at stake. This type of recurring revenue is only viable if the cost of hardware drops drastically. And that's where the other part of the plan comes in. Standardizing components, simplifying design, and eliminating all possible excess. An affordable car can't have too many variations or endless options. Simplicity becomes an ally of scale. And this scale is what ensures that the initial investment in technology returns comfortably over time. If the Model 2 is sold in mass quantities, the cost of each software update is diluted across millions of cars. The profit isn't in the first click. It's in the next month, and the next, and the next. This model also opens up space for something few automakers achieve, speed in innovation. Because the car relies more on software than mechanics, Tesla can launch new features, fix flaws, improve safety, and even alter the vehicle's behavior simply through remote updates. This keeps the product alive, constantly evolving, even after years of use. And, more importantly, it justifies the ongoing payment for the FSD, Fast Track Design. After all, if the car is always improving, the subscription value remains relevant. Of course, this requires trust. Nobody wants to pay for something that seems unfinished or experimental. Therefore, the most sensitive step, the removal of the confirm break, is not just technical, it's psychological. It's a silent transition between I'm in control and the car knows what it's doing. Tesla is betting that the average user will accept this leap, especially if the system is smooth, responsive, and reliable. And this is no small bet. It underpins the entire economic plan for the Model 2. Now, all of this only makes sense if the user base is truly broad. And for that, the price needs to be aggressive. It's not just about being cheaper than a Corolla. The car needs to seem almost too cheap to ignore, that kind of value that makes people look twice, questioning if they're reading it right. That feeling of, it can't be all this for so little, is exactly what Elon Musk wants to provoke. But unlike fleeting promotions, the model needs to stand on its own, and that's where the FSD shines. This logic completely transforms how we think about mobility. The Model 2 isn't just a car, it's a gateway to a new way of consuming transportation, where the real value isn't in what you buy, but in what you continue to use. And it's this model, much closer to what we see in technology than in automobiles, 
that Elon Musk is trying to apply on a large scale. The difference is that, this time, it's not a cell phone. It's a robot on wheels with ambitions to dominate the streets. Trusting a car to drive itself is something that directly affects the human mind. For decades, the steering wheel was the ultimate symbol of control, and now Tesla is trying to take that role out of the driver's hands with the Model 2. The real change isn't just in the electronic components, but in how people perceive autonomy. The FSD version 14 was designed to be more fluid, more human, and less robotic, cutting that feeling that the car asks permission with every movement. This transformation isn't just technical, it's emotional. When the driver feels that the car reacts as they would, trust begins to emerge naturally, without the need for speeches. In initial internal tests, the difference is visible. The system makes decisions in less than a second and avoids the hesitations typical of previous versions. Firmer curves, smooth braking, and quick responses make the car feel alive, almost intuitive. This is the point Tesla wants to reach, the moment when the driver stops thinking, I'm testing the system, and starts feeling that the car has its own personality. And this feeling is fundamental to the next phase of the strategy, transforming the Model 2 into a vehicle for massive data collection for artificial intelligence learning. The idea is simple, yet powerful. Each Model 2 on the road acts as a moving sensor, recording kilometers of information about weather, traffic, human behavior, and road conditions. This database feeds the FSD, which learns from every trip. Elon Musk knows that an autonomous driving system doesn't evolve solely in a laboratory. It needs real-world experience, and that only comes with volume. The more Model 2s are sold, the more data Tesla collects, and the faster the FSD becomes efficient, reducing the cost per improvement and widening its advantage over competitors. The brilliance of this approach lies in its scale. While other automakers rely on limited test fleets, Tesla transforms each buyer into an unwitting contributor to the advancement of AI. It's a silent exchange. The driver gains comfort and cutting-edge technology, and the company gains the most valuable fuel of the 21st century, data. This relationship creates a cycle of continuous improvement, where each update makes the system smarter, and each kilometer driven paves the way for a driverless future. This escalation of machine learning also influences the vehicle's own behavior. FSD V14 reduces the rate of human intervention by up to 20% compared to the previous version. This means fewer interruptions, more fluidity, and a feeling that the car is, in fact, making decisions on its own. The challenge now is to make the user forget the fear of the first autonomous turn, that slight natural resistance to letting go of the steering wheel. When that fear disappears, the rest is just convenience. And Tesla is betting everything on this psychological transition. Interestingly, the very cheap nature of the Model 2 is an advantage in this process. An affordable car reaches diverse audiences, and this further broadens the spectrum of data collected. Different driving styles, climates, road types, Everything goes into the learning package. It's a global laboratory on wheels, a living experiment in behavior and technology. And the most interesting thing is that each owner, without realizing it, contributes to the development of an intelligence that goes far beyond their car. While many see the Model 2 as Tesla's mass market car, internally, it's treated as a turning point. It's the link between the personal car and the autonomous robot. Musk's vision goes beyond simply selling automobiles. It's about building a network of intelligent, connected vehicles that learn from each other and evolve collectively. What began as a cheap car may actually be the biggest technological leap since the Model 3, but with an even more ambitious goal, to democratize full autonomy. And as this network grows, something interesting happens. The car begins to cease being just a machine and starts acting as a digital extension of the driver. Each trip improves the system, and each update makes it more adapted to the user's routine.
This fusion between human and algorithm is the heart of Tesla's new era. And it is precisely this fine line between trust and technology that prepares the ground for the next challenge, the increasingly human and controversial behavior of the FSD driving modes. One of the most talked about and perhaps most controversial modes in FSD version 14.2 is the so-called Mad Max. The name itself already provokes reactions. It sounds like something out of a futuristic movie where the road is a battlefield. But in practice, this mode was created to mimic more decisive human drivers, especially on fast highways like those in the United States or the European Union. The logic is simple. Hesitation can be as dangerous as recklessness. When a car takes too long to change lanes or to merge into the flow of traffic, it becomes an obstacle. And that's where Mad Max comes in. A mode that tries to be more agile, more direct, and more natural in the eyes of those who drive every day. Initial tests with this mode made it clear that it's not just fast, it's strategically assertive. The car understands when there's an opening and doesn't wait forever to act. It changes lanes confidently, adjusts its speed to match the pace of the road, and avoids those abrupt stops that often irritate drivers behind. This more proactive approach is much closer to typical human behavior, which ironically may seem safer in certain contexts. The problem, of course, is that regulators don't see the road the same way an experienced driver does. And that's exactly why the NHTSA decided to intervene. The NHTSA, the U.S. Traffic Safety Agency, contacted Tesla requesting more information about Mad Max. They haven't banned anything, at least not yet, but they want to understand how this mode fits into current traffic regulations. Tesla's response was clear. The system is optional and adjustable. In other words, the driver remains legally responsible and can choose milder modes like sloth or standard if they don't feel comfortable with Mad Max's aggressiveness. This flexibility puts Tesla in a smart position. It delivers bold technology, but always with a conservative escape route. Interestingly, this freedom of choice may be the key to the Model 2's legal survival. By allowing the driver to define the car's personality profile, Tesla transforms a potential point of conflict into an argument in favor of autonomy. Regulators may pressure, question, or even threaten, but it's difficult to prohibit something that is optional, customizable, and, above all, still keeps the human being in charge. This somewhat chameleon-like approach is a shrewd move in a constantly shifting landscape like traffic laws. And it's not just a matter of choice. It's a matter of adapting the car to different driving cultures. What's acceptable on a Los Angeles highway might be seen as reckless in Tokyo. The Mad Max serves as a tool to adjust the car's behavior to these cultural nuances, and that matters a lot when talking on a global scale. Elon Musk doesn't want to sell the Model 2 only in the US. He wants to put this car on the streets all over the world, and for that, the FSD needs to be adaptable. It needs to learn to speak the language of local traffic, however subtle it may be. Of course, this adaptability comes at a cost, the cost of scrutiny. Every time Tesla launches something bolder like Mad Max, it attracts the watchful eyes of regulators and the media. That's also part of the strategy, to create controversy, to attract attention, to force public debate about what is or isn't acceptable in autonomous driving. The company knows that every technical advance needs to be accompanied by a cultural advance. And sometimes, the best way to accelerate this process is to challenge the status quo a little. The community's response has also been divided. Many Tesla owners praise the new mode for finally feeling natural, as if the car has stopped acting like a locked-up robot. Others worry about the risks of normalizing aggressive behavior. And this internal conflict within the user base itself shows how sensitive this transition is. Tesla isn't just selling cars. It's selling a new way of being in traffic. And that inevitably generates resistance, even among enthusiasts. At the same time, Mad Max isn't the end of the line. 
It's just a sample of what FSD can become with more data, more intelligence, and more processing power. And this constant evolution depends on a key piece that hasn't yet been fully understood by the general public. The chip that commands this entire revolution from under the hood. And that's why the next stage of Tesla's plan goes even deeper into the electronic heart of the Model 2. At the heart of this entire operation is the AI5, a chip that promises to be 40 times more powerful than its predecessor. And we're not talking about a 40% jump, but a 40-fold increase. This is where Tesla ceases to be just a car manufacturer and consolidates itself as a technology company with total control of the ecosystem. From the software that drives the car to the silicon that executes every decision in real time. Elon Musk has already said in conferences that this chip represents a phenomenal design. And he's not just referring to speed. The AI5 architecture has been completely redesigned to be more compact, more efficient, and most importantly, cheaper to produce on a large scale. This cost reduction isn't a bonus, it's a necessity. A $13,000 car can't afford expensive and bulky components. The AI5 is designed to solve this. With fewer legacy parts, such as older GPUs or separate imaging systems, the chip adopts a condensed mesh layout that takes up less space and consumes less power. This allows the car to operate longer with smaller batteries, reducing overall cost without sacrificing the ability to process complex information in real time. In other words, the AI5 isn't just a chip. It's the invisible engine of affordable range. Another piece of the puzzle lies in manufacturing. To avoid bottlenecks and ensure that the Model 2 doesn't depend on unreliable suppliers, Tesla decided to produce the AI5 exclusively in the United States, dividing the task between Samsung in Texas and TSMC in Arizona. This decision is not only logistical, but also strategic. Producing locally guarantees access to U.S. government tax incentives and strengthens the supply chain against international shocks. Furthermore, this Americanization of production makes the Model 2 Sedecentinfers, Waimaun 2, eligible for IRA, Inflation Reduction Act, credits, which could be crucial in achieving the status of the cheapest and most complete EV on the continent. This same chip will also be used in other Tesla products, such as Optimus Robots and the company's data centers. In other words, the investment in AI5 isn't just for cars. It's a cross-functional bet, a way to power the company's entire artificial intelligence infrastructure with a single, standardized brain. This generates scale, reduces costs, and allows for much greater control over the performance of each system. While companies like NVIDIA need to serve dozens of clients with different demands, Tesla designs everything for itself, eliminating layers of complexity and increasing efficiency per watt and per dollar. And this detail makes all the difference in a car that will be produced in the millions. Every penny saved on the chip, every millisecond gained in processing, and represent millions of dollars saved at the end of the year. And even more importantly,